Okay, for this next tutorial, we're just going to look at a basic setup of fur. So I'm going to add the Suzanne, which is the monkey, and we'll zoom in and get close to her, turn on smooth. And this is a pretty simple exercise. All you need to do is go down to quick effect again, so object, quick effect, fur, turn it on, and we have that. And let's render and see what we got at this point. Take a second, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna turn on ambient occlusion, which will help add some shadowing and some depth. So that is under here, ambient occlusion. Let's render it again. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more depth in the fur and it's starting to look more realistic. It's a little bristly. Um, you can, uh, if you, we'll talk about this in the next one. But right now, the whatever material you assign to the fur is also what's assigned to the surface of the, uh, the geometry, and you can actually separate that out. Um, and then let's uh, just play around and let's just add a brown color. Um, let's knock the saturation down, value down, saturation up, and get kind of like a orange juice type color. Um, specularity is a little tricky with the fur, so um, just to kind of let you know, uh, depending on what you do, you might get some different results. Uh, it kind of flattens out everything wherever it hits. And so we kind of did a soft, kind of diffused. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, so you can see the specularity actually kind of balances, washes those areas out a little. So it's something you can kind of play around with, so you might decide just to turn the specularity off in the end um, and just keep it off. If you want to do uh, more realistic fur, there's a lot of Blender examples that you can download. They did a whole thing with a, a rabbit, and there's a bunch of tutorials and example files because to get realistic fur is actually a little trickier than what I just did, but this is a good place to start. Okay, so uh, let's do the next uh, one, which is looking at how to do hair. So I'll get rid of default, add a UV sphere. Okay, let's turn on uh, smoothing. We're gonna go into edit mode, and I wanna look at this from the side. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that I'm selecting everything together. Um, so we wanna make sure that the um, and in order to select areas, I'm going to go um, select and I'm going to go circle select and that enables me to come in and I just want to select the area where your scalp would normally be. Uh, now let me just make sure that I got both sides. Okay, so I got both sides. So once I select what I want, now I'm ready to uh, detach it. So I'm going to go on mesh and vertices and I'm going to do separate, separate selection. And now I have two separate objects. Now I'm actually going to reattach this, but with the fur, we want to, um, with the hair, we want to separate it out. So I'm actually going to duplicate this object. And let's um, pull this over so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we have two spheres right now. We have the original, and then we have the detached one. And I'm going to duplicate this detached one. So shift. Um, and I'm going to take one of those copies because now we have two and the original, and I'm going to fuse those together again. So objects um, join, and now those are back. So here's a single object, and then here's the, the sphere, which is the other one. Um, I'm just going to give the sphere just a, a color, um, something like that. And if we render this out, you'll see that we have 50-50 because every other pixel is being rendered because of how that's set up. Okay, so now we have this, the, the other sphere part. Uh, actually, let's rename this uh, head. Okay, and we'll rename this one and we'll call this scalp. Okay, so to add hair is actually pretty easy. It's the same way that you add particle. So we're going to go in add a particle system, add it, and the type, instead of doing emitter, we're going to change it to hair. And you can see you get something crazy like that. So now we need to tweak and adjust this a little bit to get it. So we're going to knock the hair length down to 2. 
And at this point, what we're going to do is rather than trying to do anything else, we're going to go in and actually comb it. So there is a particle mode when you have hair assigned. And what I can do is I can take the comb and I can literally just stroke it back and it'll take a sec to get it all working properly. I got a little crazy. There we go. You can see I'm actually doing a real time combing of all these um, strands hair and getting it set up the way that I want it. Okay, so let's render and see what we get at this point. Okay, so you can see now we have this uh, white white hair that we have uh, set up. Okay, so what we're going to do is get out of that mode and we're going to assign a material to the hair. And I'm going to go in and do a uh, dark brown again. So value low and let's change the U a little bit. Not too much. Turn the saturation down. Value down. And for the specular highlight, we don't want it white. It would actually be kind of more like a yellow brown or something like that. Uh, actually, let's move it closer to a tan. Knock its saturation down a little bit. And that should be good. Okay. So let's render and see what we got. And there we go. So we got a very quick, simple hair. There's obviously a lot more you can do. But if you want to do a basic rendering, that's, that's pretty easy. And that's the basic setup. Okay, so let's do cloth. Get rid of, oh, we're going to keep that. Uh, we're going to add a plane and scale it up. And we'll move the plane up here. Okay, so we're going to take the box and we're going to set the box as a collision object. So we want to pull the physics up. Okay, so that's set the collision. And we want to grab the, um, the surface and make it the cloth. Now, before that, we want to subdivide it because right now we only this is one single plane, so the cloth is going to behave properly. The more subdivisions, the more realistic it is. So we'll subdivide this um, a couple times, get that more refined, and set this to cloth. And you don't need to do anything else. You'll let it just play, and there it goes, and it falls on top. Now, it looks a little funny. There's two things that look a little funny. One is the subdivisions. So if I went back to the beginning and I increased the subdivisions, that's going to help make it look more realistic. So we'll do one more subdivide and play it again and see what we got. Oh, blue. There we go. Okay, now you can see. Now the other thing is, is uh, two other things we can add is change the shading to smooth and you can still see a little of the subdivisions. And then um, the final thing to do would be to come in and add a subdivision surface modifier after this. And now if we render this frame out, you can see we get something that's pretty nice and photorealistic. Now there are these points that are coming through. Some of that's based on the number of divisions. Uh, if we select the collision geometry, let's go back to the beginning and do that. The um, collision geometry and actually go in. Um, there's the um, inside and outside, so let's see where there is factor, cloth, outer. So if we increase the outer, and now we hit play, what it does, it increases the size on the outside, so we shouldn't have that problem anymore if we go to render this. So let's just pause. Let's see if it actually worked this time. Yeah, so you can see it got rid of it. So what it does, it increases the, the collision geometry on the outside. Okay, so that is setting up that. Now we can do more interesting things. This is good for something static. Now if we do um, something a little bit more complicated, let's try to do a flag for instance. So let's add a cylinder and we'll make this into a flagpole. Let's scale that up. Okay, so we got our flagpole. And now we're going to add a, a plane and we're going to make this into our flag. So let's scale that up and scale it a little bit down. And then we're going to rotate this and rotate it on 90 degrees. And let's move this over. Let me do this in front view, oh, side view. And move it over and move it up. And I'm also going to switch this over to wireframe so you can kind of see what I'm doing. 
Okay, so we made sure that if you look at this, that the flag part is actually inside of the, um, the uh, flagpole. And we're going to do what we did last time. We're going to take this and we're going to subdivide this several times. And break that up. Okay, so we have that set up. And the one thing we need to add at this point is when we go back into edit mode, I want to select this row right here. Okay, so you see the last row, and we want to go, we want to create a vertex group, and I'm just going to call this uh, pin group, and assign those pieces, so now we have that hooked up. Get out of this mode, and now we're going to assign cloth, and there's an option for pinning, and what pinning does is it'll keep it stuck to that area. So we're going to go pinning, and we're going to do pin group, and now if we hit play, You'll see that falls down, but it still holds onto that pinning area. Now at this point, it's actually colliding into the flagpole. So we want to select the flagpole, and we want to set that to collision. And let's go and change this over to solid view. Rewind and hit play and see what we got. Okay, so you can see. Now this is a little bit more complicated because it's attaching the particles to that point you can see it's starting to go down and move in the animate. So what we need to do at this point is we need to get that flag to actually move back up. Um, and the way we're going to get that is we're actually going to add a wind to it. So we're going to create an empty. And uh, we're going to add a wind field to it. And we're going to rotate the wind. Turn it that way, and we'll turn it a little bit on an angle, and we'll move it out here. And then we're going to change this to a plane and increase the strength. Okay, and that should be really all we need. So what it's going to do is it's going to push it. Actually, let's turn it a little bit more here. Now the thing is, is we really want to crank the strength up to something like 500, because the flag's pretty heavy. So it seems a little high. But, and if you actually look, you'll see the rings are way out there. But now if we go to hit play, and if we look, the wind is actually strong enough that it is, should be waving the flag back and forth and pushing it back up. So we'll just give it a second. Yeah, so you can see the breeze is actually starting to push it around. Um, so what you do is you basically just continue uh, going through and rendering this whole thing out and then you get the actual animation. So the thing that takes the longest is just rendering this out in the first place, and then once everything's rendered and taken care of, then it's um, a lot easier to render because you can see the frames per second is pretty slow, but now you can see the wind's actually starting to pull up the flag, and now it's actually starting to wave. Okay, so that uh, concludes the fabric, and now we'll look at um, 